Hey everyone, Vegetable Man here. Today I wanted to do a video on how I used my sim racing steering wheel pedals as uh, rudder pedals and a brake pedal for DCS World. So if you're like me and you had uh, rudder pedals and steering wheel pedals and you get sick of swapping them around all the time, or you might have a sim racing setup but you don't have a rudder pedal setup and you're keen or you do fly something like DCS World, then this video is perfect for you. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how I set it up in DCS World. There's a bit of fiddling around with the inputs. Um, and then how it works uh, in the game itself. There is a couple of small limitations. I managed to get past them. Uh, and I certainly think it's worth it to stop having to swap them around all the time. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So this is the uh, pedal set that I use. These are the uh, T3PA Thrustmaster pedals. Uh, Thrustmaster also make the pedals that I have, the flights and pedals that I have. And I bought this with the uh, T... 300 RS GT uh, steering wheel. Uh, it's a great little setup by the way. It's a, a good sort of mid, low mid range um, entry setup. I might make a video on that later on because um, I've been really enjoying that. And so uh, the, the, the pedals come with a connection that looks like this and that actually plugs directly into your steering wheel. Um, so if you wanted to use the pedals plugged straight into your steering wheel with DCS, you'd have to have your steering wheel on all the time and that's fine, it's not a problem, uh, but it runs a fan in this particular one and so I wasn't, I wasn't that keen for that so I decided to find a way to separate it out. So I got this little thing here, which you can buy from Thrustmaster, it's called a TRJ12 USB adapter and actually when you buy the Thrustmaster sort of um, uh, entry range rudder pedals, they come with one of these. I forgot that and now I have two. <laughs> so uh, if you do have um, that particular set of pedals, you don't need to buy another one of these. It's exactly the same. So what that does is you can plug straight into it and then it now becomes a USB plug-in standalone pedal set. So my steering wheel pedals are now standalone USB on their own. They're a separate input from the rest of the steering wheel. Uh, so I'm going to plug these in right now and then uh, we'll come back and talk about how we get the input set up right in DCS World. Hooked up our rudder pedals, we've uh, opened up DCS World, we're going to go to the settings options up here, we're going to go to controls and uh, in this case I'm using the Spitfire as my first example and we're going to access commands. So now you can see here I've got my left verbal throttle. Uh, which is my HOTAS, I've got my VKB Sim Gladiator, uh, which you would have, oh, if you'd seen my other video, I did a video on uh, putting out and first impressions of that one. Uh, and now we have T pedals, right? So this is where I've got my, uh, my pedals set up. This is the input that they're called. And uh, it will have a bunch of things that are automatically assigned to it. So you need to clear that out. Uh, so you can right click and go clear combo um, to clear each one of those. And you'll see here that I've got the rudder um, set up already. So if you click on that, right click and go tune combo axis. And you'll see here there's some pretty wacky stuff going on. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to reset uh, this and we'll, we'll start again. I've just got to make sure I've got both of them there. Yes, and one of them is inverted. Uh, Z is inverted. So before I reset it, I'll, um, you'll just have a quick look at my settings here for each one. So it's going to come up with two axes um, because unlike a rudder pedal, a specific rudder pedal set up for the game, it's actually one axis that is centered in the middle when you've got your feet like that. When you move it like that, it's pushing the axis one way and when you move it like that, it's pushing the axis another way, like a uh, roll or pitch axis on your joystick. Um, on the pedals, the racing pedals, it's actually two separate inputs. So you've got, what I've used is I've used the accelerator for my right rudder input, the clutch for my left rudder input, and then I'm going to use the brake as um, brakes, both brakes together, that input there. So this joy slider one is actually my clutch pedal. So that's me pushing the clutch pedal, you can see that there. And then uh, RZ axis down here is me pushing the accelerator pedal. Okay, and I've got curvatures set up there. You can see they're actually slightly different. Uh, that's probably just uh, fuddling <laughs> on my part. All right, so um, 
we'll reset this and uh, and make sure we can get it right. Uh, right. So first thing you're going to do, so this is what you'll see when you come into it the first time. Actually, I'll clear it completely and we'll start from scratch. So clear combo, so now there's nothing in there. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go Joy RZ, so that's me sitting on the accelerator, reset that again, Joy Slider 1. So that's what I'm going to start with. So I've selected that, now I'm going to click on it again, and I'm going to select the other one, which is Joy RZ. So that's my accelerator pedal. So now I've got my clutch and my accelerator pedal tied to the rudder. Right now, you can see, so this is me pressing the accelerator, you can see it's hard to the right, and if I push it down, it'll go to the middle, and so you can actually, if you wanted to, you could use it as one axis input because that's rudder central there. So that's my accelerator halfway down. But if you're going to do that, you'd need to keep your foot on the accelerator the whole time you're flying. I don't think anyone wants to do that. So <laughs> we won't worry about that. And then if I put my foot on the clutch, it's doing the same thing, but uh, well, exactly the same thing right there. Uh, so the two inputs are the same. Um, but obviously you need to have your foot resting on them to make it work. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to go to tune combo axis. And again, here you can see that I have the selection for my two inputs. So joy slider one is my clutch. So that's going to be our left. Um, it's going to be our uh, rudder left. When I push it down, the rudder should go to the left. So First of all, we're going to change it to slider, all right? So you can see what it does there. Immediately, it brings it down to there. We're going to change the saturation of the Y axis to 50. And suddenly, the picture changes. So that now goes from halfway on that axis as the game sees it. That's coming from the halfway point back, right? So now I'm going to add some curvature and we're going to go to minus... 25, which is what I had it set at. That's to mean, uh, basically means the curvature means that my input is, the more I put my foot down, the more my input's going to matter, but you have more control early on. So for the first bit there, I'll, I'm putting in quite a bit of movement for my movement of the axis. The further I go down, and then it goes quite quickly towards the end there. You can change that. That's more of a feel thing for however you like to feel it. Um, but this is how I liked it. All right, so now we're going to go to the RZ axis. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to change it to a slider. And we're going to change it to 50% uh, saturation. 50. And we're going to give it minus 25 curvature. Ooh, a little bit too much there. Right, now, right now, they're still inputting in the same direction. So that's me pushing down on the accelerator and it's going the same way as I was pushing down on the clutch. So they're both going rudder left. So if I click invert, now it goes the other way. So if I come out of this now, what we should see, hopefully, if I've done it right, is the picture looks like that. So now it's in the middle. When I push my foot down on the accelerator, this is going towards right rudder and I release it and that comes back. And when I push that way, it goes to left rudder and goes back. And now I'm going to jump on the plane and show you how this looks. Uh, and now the other thing I've done, so this is where it has some limitations. So with the Spitfire specifically, the way the Spitfire brakes work are, at, you pull on the brake on the uh, control column and then you push on the rudder pedal for it to specify which brake you want on your left and right wheel. Because obviously, in something like a Spitfire particularly, you want differential braking. So you can quite happily have just one input for the rudder because that's all the Spitfire has anyway. So if you look down at Joy Z here, this is me pushing on the brake, and that's the brake at work. Right, so uh, I've, I've um, used the brake pedal, so if we go to Tune Combo Axis again, you can see here, where it sits in the middle, well, it doesn't sit in the middle, so that's that's no brakes, and this is full brakes. So that's how it's going to work. So that's going to put, if I've got no rudder input, specifically in the Spitfire, and I put my foot on the brake, that's going to go to full brakes. In the Spitfire, as I'll show you, when you do that, if you put your foot on the brakes and then put on the left rudder, it's going to direct all the braking power to the left-hand uh, brake, 
brake unit and the aircraft will pivot on that left hand um, left hand wheel. So there are other aircraft that that doesn't work on and I'll explain uh, how that works in a second. So I've also got the F-18. So if we go to the F-18 and look at the axis commands and uh, T pedals here, we've got the rudder. So I've done, I've set up the rudder exactly the same. Uh, if we go oh, tune combo axis, um, you can see here joy slider one, which is my left rudder. And I've got the curvature slightly different. Like I said, that's, uh, that's specific to the aircraft and how you want it. You actually really don't use the rudder very much in the F-18, um, but you can. And then, oops, uh, and then RZ is the opposite. So that's set up exactly the same as the Spitfire. I've got the brakes. So here you have more options. You've got wheel brake and then wheel brake left and right. Now, obviously, we can't have wheel brake left and right on your pedals unless there is an option here that you could have the rudder, if you wanted to, set to the twist axis on your joystick, if you've got it, and then you could use the pedals um, on your uh, steering wheel set for your left and right brakes, but I think that would kind of defeat the purpose. Um, so again, I've got my brakes, so I'm pressing on my brake pedal there. My brakes are set as the wheel brakes, so that will, in the F-18 or pretty much any other aircraft, apply the brakes to both wheels, just like normal, but it doesn't, it's not set up, the aircraft is not built to work like the Spitfire does. So what I've had to do is I've had to set two buttons on my joystick as my left and right brake. So uh, I'll show you on here. On my Gladiator, there's two buttons down here. That one, uh, this one here, and this one here. I've set them up as my brakes for differentiating. So if I'm taxiing somewhere in my F-18 and I need to do a tight turn, then I will use those. I'll just press it down with my finger and I'll use it to help bring the aircraft around. But uh, generally speaking, I'll be using my rudder pedals um, as the, the F-18 is pretty good because you've got that high mode if you know about the F-18 it's a high mode where it's built for carriers you can use it to turn the wheel a really long way the nose wheel and it will bring it around because obviously in the F-18 what your rudder pedal inputs is your rudder in the air and on the ground it's your rudder and your uh, nose wheel steering so it's like using the command for your nose with steering. And that's where it's really handy. Like I said, you don't really use the rudder a lot in the F-18, but you will use the nose wheel steering a lot. So um, that's where the pedals are really handy in the F-18 and also the brakes for when you land as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pop my VR headset on and we're going to jump in the Spitfire and I'll show you uh, what the inputs look like down there. I'm going to try and set my camera up so you can see my rudder pedals and you can see what I'm doing and then on the screen you'll see what's happening uh, in the aircraft itself. So I'll set, get that all set up and then we'll come back right into that. So guys, I've just quickly paused the video here just to make a note. The eagle-eyed amongst you will uh, notice there that when I put my foot on the left pedal and say I'm putting my foot on the left pedal, I'm actually putting my foot on the right pedal. Uh, and the reason for that is I hung my webcam from my desk downwards and inverted it. So everything is backwards. So uh, <laughs> rest assured, it does actually the work the way I'm saying. It's just that the image is uh, backwards. So yeah, uh, let's carry on. All right, so we've jumped in the Spitfire. We're on the end of the runway, ready to go. And we have a look down here and we can see we've got our rudder inputs. So... That's right rudder, that's left rudder. If I look out the window here, you can see rudder moving there, oh, rudder in the canopy, rudder moving there. And if we move to the other side, we've got the rudder moving there. We've also got the brake. That's the brake moving there. And we discussed how the brake input on the Spitfire works. So I can show you a little bit of how the brake works. So I'm going to put my foot on the brake, I'm going to give it some right rudder, I'm going to bring the power up, and we're going to pivot on that right wheel right there. It's probably not very good for the right wheel, but that's what we're doing. And we can do the same for the left wheel here. Exactly the same input there. And then once I let go of the rudder, the brakes will go back to normal. So you can see how all that works, and that is pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump in the F-18 and uh, I'll show you how it works in that one as well. So, now we're parked in the F-18 
and uh, we're up and running, ready to go, and again, you can see my rudder inputs moving there, and uh, I think if I move the rudder and then put my foot, you should see the brake going down, but obviously that's actually applying it to both brakes, as you see, I'll do that, and you can see both brakes, both brakes in action there, it doesn't work as the same as the Spitfire, obviously, as I discussed. So what I have set up is if I put on a little bit of power, and uh, ooh, we have to oh, park brakes off, uh, and then I press my buttons here. That's my left brake in action there. So this is me pressing the buttons on my NXT Gladiator. That's me pressing the right hand brake, and it's moving around. If I press on the pedal, that's the nose wheel steering in action, combined with the use of the brake as well. And it goes both ways. So this is just dragging the left hand brake. You can see it doesn't actually make that much difference. The nose wheel steering really does fight it. So you're actually generally much better off just using the pedals and using the steering to bring yourself into the right place. And then I'm putting my foot on the brake there just to slow the aircraft down. This is where I tap on the brake and where I might engage high mode. So you can see right there, that's, that's high mode engaged. So this is what you use on the carrier and then I'll turn it off again just to line myself up on the runway and we're, oh, that wasn't very good and, uh, and we're about central there and sort of ready and set for takeoff. So you can see it's actually quite straightforward and not too hard to get this set up. Um, I certainly do, um, I certainly appreciate it and find it a lot easier to use um, than, well, any, <laughs> any other system really. Um, it just keeps my whole desk area a lot tidier. So I actually got all this from a uh, from a website. Um, so I'll put that website in the link below that showed me how to get there. It's just an Imja um, uh, uh, link. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys uh, do enjoy it. Throw any questions if you need any help, and I can certainly try and help you along the way. I don't think it's specific to the setup that I'm running. Um, I think you can use it with any set of pedals, probably. I can't see why not. So uh, yeah, tell me your guys' success stories or if it hasn't worked for you and we can help out or um, maybe there's better ways to do these things as well and I'd certainly like to hear about them. So thanks very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.